Hey guys, uh, today we're going to do something different. We're going to let you in on our top five favourite places in WA. We unfortunately didn't get to get to everything that we wanted to. Uh, we missed out on a lot down the, down the southwest, but uh, these are some of our favourite spots. Yeah, we tried to keep it a little bit different as well, um, not just putting down Exmouth, Coral Bay, or them uh, really touristy places. Um, we've got someone here that you might not have heard of before. Uh, number one on our list is Steep Point. I mean, this is in no particular order at all. Uh, we had a wicked time out at Steep Point. Uh, we camped out there. It's the westernmost point of the Australian mainland. So it's a big bucket list item for a lot of people. Yeah, we wanted to go there because we heard the fishing and forward driving um, and exploring was really good and it didn't disappoint at all. Just felt like every time you threw a line into the water, you'd just be pulling out big um, spangled emperors. Um, so if yeah. you can't fish, uh, there's a, <laughs> there's a mass, that's a massive place to go to. And as soon as you put a line in the water with, a bait on, with some bait on it, you'll catch something. Yeah, it was like bang. And then we were just using the smaller fish we caught for bait. Um, and it was, yeah, really awesome. Yeah. Um, there was so much sea life as well. Every time you looked into the water, um, there was just dolphins or you saw little reef sharks cruising past. Yeah, big kingfish, tuna and stuff. Yeah, and turtles and that. Yeah, it's a really good four-wheel drive spot too. Like there's the useless loop. Um, it's really good to see. You go to Thunder Bay blowholes and a couple other spots. It's a really interesting place. You do have to book this one on their National Parks website. I reckon it was $11 an adult per night, which is pretty standard for WA's parks. Um, you can also buy a parks pass, which we did when we got to WA for a year, and that was about, I think, $100. Mm -hmm. and that'll... Yeah, $120, I think, for the year. Yeah. And that gets you into all your national parks everywhere around uh, Western Australia. <laughs> yeah, any range of stations and things like that, you don't have to stop in and pay fees yeah. each time. You can cruise on through. Uh, the campsites were really secluded, so there's lots of them near each other, but it felt like you weren't camping next to anybody. Yeah. So that was really good. And like, I think all of them were right on the beach, so you're camping on the sand. We, you can't take your vans or anything like that. I think it's just camper trailers, um, swags and tents really that um, go out there because the road in is really rough and corrugated. Yeah, the, the road in was so corrugated and probably wasn't the last 10 kilometers when they you get ruts of 200 250 mil so yeah we were just pretty slow going on for a little while there yeah so um yeah we just took the swag out um and that was really good oh besides from the mozzies but yeah, yeah. we got there at a bad time and we still had such a great time there but as soon as dusk hit we got swamped by mozzies but that was only because they had a heap of rain a few days yeah, beforehand I, I don't think it's usually like that so yeah, that was probably yeah. our favorite place in WA and- That was a wicked spot. Um, we were actually contemplating going back there after Broome um, because we enjoyed it so much to go spend some more time there. Yeah. Number two on our list is Cowberry. So you probably all heard of Cowberry National Park, which was awesome, but also the town and just the surrounding areas. So I firstly want to tell you about Lucky Bay. Now there's two Lucky Bays in WA and one of them being in Cape Le Grand National Park, which we will talk about later. Um, but the Lucky Bay we're talking about is about 40 minutes from Cowberry, the town. So you can stay out there. I think it might be 15 bucks a night um, or like no power and water camping uh, just over the other side of some dunes from the beach. Um, it's really awesome because you can just cruise across the dunes, uh, go beach driving, full driving, uh, swimming and fishing. Um, and we had really beautiful weather while we were there. Yeah, you can have a fire at the campground there. Um, they've got this lagoon that you can drive to. Uh, it's got a little swimming and fishing spot. Um, and you can get oysters there too. So there's a heap of oysters on the beach. So go take a hammer and a chisel down and break a few off and um, you got fresh oysters. Yeah. So when we were at this Lucky Bay, that's when we ventured to Cowberry. We firstly did a day trip and then realized how beautiful it was. Uh, a couple days later, we went back with a caravan and actually stayed in one of the foreshore parks. I think there's two or three caravan parks in the town. So as everyone knows, Cowberry uh, National Park has the famous nature's window, uh, the iconic photo shot everyone gets when they're sitting inside the rock hole. 
Um, but they've also got a Z-Bend walk there, um, which takes you down to the, the river that runs through the National Park. Uh, you can swim there. Uh, it wasn't until we got put on by the ranger to, to go walk a little bit further, and he um, put us on to go around the bend a bit further, and it gets really deep, so you can swim, uh, but the only thing was it was freezing cold. Yeah, so I think the days are about 20 degrees at that stage, but after a long walk, it was actually really nice to hop in the water. Um, yeah. just put your feet in and stuff like that so yeah definitely venture a little bit further on the Z Bend walk and you will get to some deeper water holes which was awesome when you are in Calberry there is um, heaps of nice walks and lookouts you can do um, so definitely go for just like a day trip and a drive um, they've got like a bit of a scenic route up on some cliffs and that as well um, and you get a really good view of the ocean and like there's big seas rolling in um, yeah so it's really awesome to just have a look around the town there. Yeah, it's definitely worth a couple of days there. Um, we yeah, really enjoyed it. It was actually one of the places where we thought we could actually live here. It was, uh, yeah, it was really nice. One of our real favourites. Yeah. Number three was Cape Levique. Uh, it's also known as the Dampier Peninsula. So that's got like Pender Bay, uh, Kooljaman right on the tip. Um, that was really cool. We left our caravan in Broome and just decided to do a swag trip up there. Uh, we went out and stayed at James Price Point first. Uh, that was really cool. Yes. Red cliffs, white sandy beaches, real blue ocean. After that, we headed to Pender Bay and that place was unreal. Uh, it's got amazing camps and, and all of them have beach views just about. You camp right up on top of the cliff. You've got the beach down below that you can drive on. Uh, you got to watch out for donkeys, so from what we heard, so um, when you go there, ask about the donkeys. <laughs> yeah, you just tell them. So a story we heard was about the donkeys is if you're a female and you're walking on the beach and a donkey sees you, um, you got to be careful because you might get humped. Yeah, apparently there's really horny donkeys up there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, we, we didn't see it ourselves, but that's the stories that we've heard from a few people now. Pender Bay was awesome, so not just your campsites with the amazing views, but you drive down onto the beach um, and you can actually explore some rock pools and that from there, um, which were really nice on the hot day, because like you can swim in the ocean, but you don't want to go in too deep because it's a bit sharky and crocky. It's sharky <laughs> and crocky, so you gotta be careful. Um, but that was one of our, yeah, it was a good spot. We uh, did a little catch and cook there. Chelsea caught a heap of fish because I couldn't catch a cold. And then we <laughs> cooked it up on the beach. That was really cool. Yeah, and then we moved on to Kooljaman. So definitely book all these places before you head up there as well, um, because they are quite busy, especially in the dry season. Kooljaman has an all right campsite. You're all pretty close um, and pretty jam packed in there. You can't take your caravan either. So. If you want to take your caravan up to uh, Cape Levique, you've got to book into Signet Bay, or there is another um, Gumbunnan Wilderness Retreat, but mm, we didn't average. find it that amazing. So definitely book. Uh, while you're there, there's a couple of pearl tours you can do. Uh, Signet Bay and Willie Creek, um, they're both out that way. But Kooljaman was really cool. You can drive on the beach for a fair way. They do tours, so they'll do self-drive tours and they'll take you out and show you where to where to go. Um, the Aboriginals out there will show you a few things uh, yeah, about the culture Yeah, that's meant to be stuff. really good. We didn't do the tour, but some of our friends did and their photos were like amazing. I think they went kayaking and stuff like that. Um, yeah, we'd like the Indigenous like elders there. Um, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, definitely head up to Cape Levic. It's all bitumized now, so you will be able to take your caravans. Um, but again, definitely book because it, I feel like 2021 especially, it's going to be jam-packed up there. Oh yeah, it's going to be pretty hectic. We're up to number four. Uh, we stayed at Quabba Point, so it's also Quabba Blowholes. Uh, there's a nice little camp there, uh, toilets and stuff, but they also call it the aquarium because it's fantastic snorkeling through there, uh, which we yeah, found out ourselves. You had There was so much sea life, uh, and then high tide compared to low tide was yeah, ridiculous. Like. You can walk through there on low tide and then when high tide comes through you're snorkeling with fish and turtles and stingrays, even the old octopus. This is a really awesome spot for us. We actually ended up staying 10 nights here. This is just after all them regional lockdowns in WA with COVID. So they actually weren't um, patrolling it or asking for fees from people. Actually, when we rocked up, um, some of the oldies that were around us 
told us like don't pay because the box um, the image put the donation in wasn't even locked um, so it's meant to be $22 a night but we got 10 nights for free right on the ocean yeah it was beachfront sort of camping you wake up in the morning you have a coffee outside looking out over the ocean you could have a campfire every night which was amazing uh, being able to sit back and have a bit of a fire that was really good People usually know Quabba Point for Quabba Station or Red Bluff. Like these are really nice places, um, especially Red Bluff, but the road out there was hectic. Like it was probably worse than the drive to Steep Point. Um, so we weren't really yeah, happy we, to take the van out. We did a day trip just to do a little tester. Uh, so if you are planning on going out to Red Bluff, do a day trip first just to check what the road's like. Yeah. Don't commit to it because the road can be pretty hectic through there. Yeah, and we were following caravans on the way out or overtaking them, um, and they were just crawling and they were in big off-road vans and stuff. So I don't know if it was just when we went up, the road was really bad or it's like that all the time. But definitely um, all that Quabba area is awesome for fishing, especially if you're after um, cliff fishing and that. It's pretty risky and apparently like, lots of people have died out there. So we <laughs> didn't fish off the cliff, yeah, but. They do give you a big warning as you drive up with the King Waves kill yeah. sign. So yeah, a lot of people were cliff fishing. I mean, it's we tried a little bit, but it's a bit, bit risky. The oceans out there are, are crazy. Yeah, the blowholes just um, show you how bad it is anyway, because yeah, they're just absolutely roaring and you can hear them from the campsite. Um, but yeah, definitely we spent 10 nights there, so it's awesome and um, yeah, get in early because it will fill up. Yeah, it always fills up by by one o'clock. Yeah, it's yeah. chock-a-block full of people. Yeah, but got... the good thing is it's only, I think it's like 45 minutes from Carnarvon. So even if you are staying out there, you can always quickly duck in, stock up and come back out. Yeah. Which is what we did a couple of times too. Our last top five destination in WA is Cape Le Grand National Park and also its surrounding beaches, which were just as awesome. We did stay at Lucky Bay, which is um, where you get them iconic kangaroo on the beach photos. Uh, this was awesome, um, beach driving, like especially. Yeah, it's for great beginners. for beginners and uh, people that haven't done a lot of uh, beach driving before. All the beaches down Esperance Way uh, rock solid, so it's great to get your confidence up and get stuck into it. The campground at Lucky Bay was really good. All of the sites have nice ocean views as well. Uh, it's got really good facilities there, showers, toilets, uh, but it's one you've definitely got to book well in advance. Um, when we got down there, there was a lot of people that could only get one night here and there, or had to move a couple. Yeah. Actually, no, they didn't have to move because it's first in, best dressed to whatever site's free. Um, but yeah, yeah, we booked, I think, three months in advance because that was somewhere that I knew that we really wanted to go. So definitely get in early because the national parks down there book up super quick. Yeah. Um, another one in the area is Conding Up. So this is just like a tiny little town. It's just got an oval and they let you free camp there. Yeah, so they got a nice free camp there. There's toilets there that you can use, but it's great location to do day trips from. Uh, there was, what was it, Duke of Orleans. That was a fantastic beach. Uh, it wasn't really that popular, but it was so nice, white sandy beaches, deep blue oceans, crystal clear water. Yeah, you just park up there for the day and chill out on the beach. So that one was called Warden Beach. I think that was Bryce's absolute favorite in WA. Yeah, that um, was great yeah, down just, there. Yeah, it was just like picture perfect. Uh, yeah, so definitely don't just go to Lucky Bay and Cape Le Grand National Park, like adventure out a bit further than that. Um, and this is all relatively close to Esperance as well. So even if you don't get into the national park for camping. Um, stay at Conding Up, which is a free option on the Oval, or just day trip from Esperance. Uh, definitely worth having a look. That brings us to the end of our top five in WA. Uh, we didn't get to every place in WA, unfortunately, but that'll be for next time. If you've got any cool places, let us know in the comments, uh, places we should check out next time, or even if you're interested, check the comments out and see what other people have to say. Yeah, so we thought we'd do something a bit different and give you some more information on our favourite places. Thank you for watching and if you did enjoy, make sure you like the video and subscribe to our channel. And hit the bell, uh, the notification <laughs> button and then just, you can... Just do everything. <laughs> <laughs> then you would be notified when we put up videos. All right, thanks. In WA. <laughs> In WA. <laughs> In WA.
W I 